afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Wally Rada. I'm your host for this leadership session. Thank you and welcome to welcome to leadership this beautiful Saturday afternoon, being the 14th of October, 2023. It's good to see you all. I see some regular faces. All right, we're ready to learn how we can improve our chances of making our first million dollars. Everybody ready? Okay, let's talk about it. Today, we live in the 21st century. Today, our Manica, we live the post-COVID-19 era. Unfortunately, COVID-19, whoever was responsible for it, whether it's China or whoever, no one knows, they ruined the world. They destroyed everything that mankind had built. And post-COVID-19, we have to build it again. We had to build new economies. We have to build new resources. We had to revive the billions and billions and billions and billions of dollars that have been lost by companies, governments, and multinationals around the world. We had to try to get people employed again. Millions of people lost their jobs and ended up living in poverty. All thanks to one government or two governments around the world deciding to inflict death on people who knows who they are no one knows but we know for sure that COVID-19 was man-made according to science somebody made it and put it in the market will we ever find out I don't know but what we do know is as entrepreneurs as students we need to start learning how to overcome the economic downfall or economic um, disaster and leadership disaster, human capital disaster that COVID-19 left us with, all right? Did anybody here lose their job during COVID-19? Put their hand up. Did anybody get fired during COVID-19? Okay, one, two, three, four. Okay, excellent. Albert, have you found a new job? Yes or no? Hi, Albert. Say hello to me, Albert. Have you found a new job? Okay, all right. Nice to see you, Albert. Where are you from, yes, Albert? Sir. What country are you from? What country are you from, Albert? Talk to me, Albert. Where, where are you from? I am from Philippines. Right, and where do you live? In Manila, in Quezon City, or where? I am in Quezon Province. All right, and you're looking for a job at the moment? No, I already have a company. Fantastic. It's great to hear. I think I spoke to you before. So how's the company doing? Is it growing? Yeah, it's growing okay. and we already have four branches. All right. So I hope with today's lecture, it'll give you more insight how to hopefully help you build your 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th and 12th branch, hopefully by the end of next year. Would that make you happy? Yes, sir. Okay, Thank I can't you. wait to visit you. So would Amala. He'd love to visit you one day. All right? Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, let's start talking about it. Today, we're going to talk about how simplicity, simplicity, and transparency are a vital ingredient in transforming leadership or businesses in the 21st century economy. It's no point saying in the 21st century, because really businesses are out to make money. That's everybody's belief, right? Everybody here says, when I'm in business, my prime focus is to make money, right? Everybody say it, money. Come on, everybody say money, money. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So that was what everybody is focused on after COVID-19 because our lives were ruined. We suffered. We had to work from home on Zoom. I had to stay home every day and see my wife all day. And I couldn't chat with my secretary and have fun with my secretary and make jokes because my wife was sitting next to me at another desk working from home. Was it fun? Oh, no, it wasn't. I prefer to go to the office. But COVID-19 ended ended the way we are used to doing business and it also affected the way we manage our people and manage the way we run our business. It changed our ideology. We went from a customer centric world we were where we were focused on delivering quality services or quality goods to our 
customers. Post COVID-19, the only thing we're now focused on is money, 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 and more money, right? Everybody say it. Money! Come on, money! All right, good. Now, it's a good thing to make money, right? It's a good thing to make money. Albert wants to make money. Bathan John Lewis wants to make money. I'm sure he wants to make money. I don't know if Florence in her beautiful pink top wants to make money, right, Florence? You want to become rich, Florence. Okay. And Manika wants to make money. And Su Liang would like to be a millionaire within the next three months or a year, maybe. All right. I can see that smile on her face. Now Yin wants to be a millionaire within two or three years. She wants to be the youngest millionaire in her in her little city or little town. Juan Layola wants to be a millionaire. So does Selena. So do I. So does, where's my co-host? Where are you, mate? So does Mr. Amala and his new wife, his young wife. They want to be millionaires too. And Mr. Amala's mother will be very happy because then she can stop working and Mr. Amala can drive her around in his sports car all day. And then I'll have to look for a new co-host because Mr. Amala will be too rich to work for me. But he still loves me. He'll still work for me. Good on you, mate. All right. So let's talk about it. So let's take... COVID-19 and use that as the reason why the world was transformed. And let's talk about how we have to fight that transformation to take the world of business, the corporate world back to where it was pre-COVID-19, but bring it ahead of what we were before. Because even though COVID-19 took us from being centric, customer-centric, product centric and business centric to make us money centric making money alone or focusing on money alone can basically drive your business to the ground because if you only focus on dollars or cents you forget the crit critical elements you forget the core of your business the salt and pepper the butter the chocolate that makes a chocolate cake you need certain ingredients so let's look at those so who can tell me other than making money, what do you think the three most important assets in a business are? Who can give me the first asset? First asset, what is it? Put your hands up. Come on. The first one, what is it? Come on, guys. Wake up. Okay. Who's going to give me the first answer before I call you? All right. Albert's going to go first. Young Albert, go ahead. What's the first important asset that a business must have in order to survive? I think it's the connection. Connection? Yeah. No, connection is not really the first asset. Connection is a is like uh, a mean, uh, a medium. But what do you need before you go looking for connections? What else? Come mm. on. You need a product or service, right? You need yeah. to have a product or a service. Otherwise, what are you going to do? You're going to sit behind okay. your desk and say, I'm the CEO, but I got no product or service, right? <laughs> so I'm the CEO of myself, right? So the first thing we need is the creativity of having a product or service. Thank you, um, Albert. Who can give me number two? Michelle's scratching her head. Young Michelle, I'm um, letter piece. Give me number two, young lady. I know you know it because I can see your beautiful watch and you're full of smiles today. So I know you had lunch, probably chicken adobo, and I haven't had any lunch yet. But tell me, what's number two? Are you there, Michelle? Look. Michelle? Come on, Michelle. Don't be shy. Open your microphone, Michelle. Hello, Michelle. Are you there? Uh, I, uh, yeah. What I is think, number sir, two? I think it's plan. Money? Funds? Plan. Plan. Plan? No. Plan you need. I'm talking about the ingredients. The first one is a product money. or service. So what's the second one? Money. Forget money. Before you have money, what do you need? I don't know. Come on. Uh, Come on, no. what do you need to make the business run? Oh. You need you need human capital, right? You need people, correct? Either yourself or someone else to run the business, correct? You've got a product or service. You need people to make it, people to deliver the service, right? You need to actually think of 
whether you can find the right human capital. Human capital is the most valuable asset that any business can have. Do you understand that, everyone? So the first thing we need is a product and service or service. The second thing we need is the human capital. And the third thing we need is the, is the financial capital to get that business started. But in order to raise financial capital, we still have to have the product or service and we have to have the human talent that can make that product or service a reality. Do you all agree with that? Yes or no? Do you understand that, Michelle? Wave your hand to me, young Michelle. Learn, Michelle. Write it down. One day you're going to be a millionaire. You're going to start your own business soon. And then you can buy me coffee. All right? I promise I'll buy you coffee. No problem. Okay? So does everybody understand that? Okay? So number one, it is the product or the service. Number two, it's the human capital. And number three, it's the money you need to make it a reality. Now, let me ask you a question. And I want young Manika to answer this because I know Manika knows the answer. Manika, in order to come up with a product or service, you need something that starts with C. And in order for the human capital to be able to help your business, they need to have this C ingredient as well. Do you know what it is, Manika? Open your microphone, young Manika. Come on, young lady. Don't be shy. Are you there, Manika? Hi, Manika. Are you shy again? Open your microphone. Manika? Okay, Manika is not with me at the moment. I, can't, I don't think she can hear me. Selena. Selena Quimson. Good afternoon, young lady. You're looking gorgeous as usual. Open your microphone for me, please. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon. Selena, I'm looking yes, for sir. two important qualities that you need to have when coming up with a product and service. And the word starts with C for cat. And this quality is also imperative to your human capital. Can you tell me what that quality is? Is it the capital, sir? No. Cash. It starts with C <laughs> for cat. It starts with C for cat. I'll give you the second letter. R for Robert. I'm not going to give you any more. That's it. What is it? Come on. Don't let me down, Selena. Aside from capital, sir. I no, capital is C A. C A is capital. Oh, C -O, I'm talking C R. C R. R C -A. is A, sir, right? Huh? R is A. Is it? C for Charlie, R for Rome. Third letter is E for Echo. What is the word? Sorry, come again, sir. The first letter is C for Charlie. C. Yes, the sir. The second letter is R for Robert. R. And for the Robert. third letter is E for Elephant. All right, I've, you've got one second, Selena. Otherwise, oh um, somebody else is going to beat you. One. Two, three, Quack, okay. Sir. <laughs> no, no. Okay, keep tuned, Selena. I'll come back to you. All right, Thank who's you, next? Sir. Let's talk to uh Tin Kim Tan. Help me, Tin Kim Tan. What is the word I'm looking for, Tin Kim? So maybe the word we are looking for is creativity. Very good. Give her a big hand, everyone. Okay, the word is being creative, Selena. Do you understand that, gorgeous? So if you're not creative to come up with a product or service that is going to encapsulate the market, you lose your investment. No one will lend you money to start the business. If the people that work for you do not have the creative mindset to make your dream or your, your product or service come true, your business will fail. So creativity is a core ingredient that we need. All right. Let's talk about why that is so. Let me share my PowerPoint, please. Okay, here we go. Today, remember, we're talking about the importance of incorporating two words, simplicity and transparency. Now, I'm sure Selena is saying to herself, hold on, what's Mr. Wally talking about? He must be getting old. How can an old man like him become creative? That's not true, Selena. I'm not that old. I'm still young at heart, Selena trust me. All right. So let's go on and talk about this. 
Okay, simplicity and transparency. What do they mean to us as young entrepreneurs and as people who are studying to so they no longer have to live in poverty so they can become rich and be successful? All of you are in that category. Okay, let's talk about it. What is simplicity? What is transparency? Simplicity is about how simple it is to resolve a problem. It's about how. Do we understand the problem? Do we understand what we want? Have we clearly communicated the solution to somebody in a creative manner? And is our approach easy to understand? Do we understand that through simplicity, we can motivate people to believe in and build and create something that is going to make money so you can pay their salary and keep them employed? It's a very word simplicity. Simplicity. But unfortunately, for most people, they over overlook simplicity. It really is. Every day you go to the supermarket, Selena, and you walk around the supermarket for 20 minutes deciding which vegetable you can buy. However, that's not simplicity. You can walk into a supermarket, go to the first green vegetable and pick it up. That's simplicity. But for most of us, we choose to make life more difficult than it really is. And not only do we do that in our personal life, we have a habit of doing that in business as well. Look at the guy in the picture, by the way. The cartoon is not me. He's my friend that I use in all my presentations. I don't know his name, but he doesn't look anything like me. I hope you don't think he's me. It's not. All right? So this guy even realized, if you look on the look on his face, that he is making it too complicated. He's using, he's using a fine ink tip to write his notes instead of using an easy running ballpoint pen or pencil. He has to dip his uh, little nib in ink every five minutes. Why doesn't he use a pencil or a, a ballpoint pen? It would be simpler. But this guy forgot about simplicity. Let me take you to a famous quote from a guy who motivated me and inspired me. Does everybody know who Steve Jobs is? Do you know who Steve Jobs is, Ninita? Wave your hand to me, Ninita. Selena, do you know who Steve Jobs is? All right. He said, simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. It takes a lot of hard work to make something simple, to truly understand the underlying challenges and come up with elegant solutions. It is not just minimalism or the absence of clutter, Selena. It involves digging through the depth of complexity to be truly simple you have to go really deep into your stomach. You have to deeply understand the essence of a product in order to be able to get rid of the parts that you are not essential or the parts that you think are essential or the parts of your thoughts that are not essential. Steve Jobs. Everybody knows that Steve Jobs was a poor boy who grew up in suburbia, America. His father was a poor electronic salesman. Steve Jobs lived as an average boy and had a garage in the backyard where he repaired old mobile phones and toys so he could build his dream in electronics. But Steve Jobs learned the hard way. He learned how to make simple things do amazing things. And that was the idea behind the MacBook. Okay, it was behind the Mac computer behind the MacBook, behind the iPad, behind the iPhone. Everything in the Apple technology was simplified. That was the core ingredient of Apple, simple, all right? And I'll tell you more about that later. Definition of transparency, um, everyone, is about how, about the know-how, far, knowing how far we need to go. It's about knowing how much information we need to disclose. How do you create a true and accurate measure of performance? Transparency aids fact-based decision-making. Without transparency, we need miracles to succeed. Transparency is the progress that motivates teams. 
Why does transparency help motivate teams? Because when you make things simple, you need to communicate them. When you communicate them, you're being transparent. Can you imagine if Selena tells her children, okay, if she has children, um, to cook chicken adobo for her because she's very tired? For example, she says to her 10-year-old or 12-year-old, you love mommy? Yes, go and cook chicken adobo for me. And the kid looks at mommy, huh? I don't know what adobo is. Go and cook for me. Mummy's sick. So what does the son do? Gets chicken out of the freezer, throws it in the pot, adds water, adds some tomato sauce or whatever he can find in the fridge, puts the stove on and lets it boil. Mummy, I cooked chicken adobo for you. And what happens? Selena goes to the kitchen. What's this? Mummy, you told me you want chicken. So all I know, I'm 12 years old. I boiled the chicken. I added tomato sauce to the water. Why? Because Selena did not communicate the message in the form of a simple message. Neither was she transparent in exactly what she meant. Does everybody understand that? Yes or no? All right. So does everybody understand what I mean by the simple term simplicity and transparency? Yes or no? Come on, wave your hands. Don't be monuments. I want you to be active. I want you to learn. I don't like monuments. I have enough monuments every time I walk down the street. Talk to me. All right? So can you girls give me, or you guys, can you give me one example of something in your life that you do every day and you forget about simplicity? Who can give me one example? It's something that you do every day and sometimes you forget about why you should be simple. Anybody put up your hand. Come on. No one knows. No one has anything that they forget to simplify. I can give you a hundred examples, girls, if you want them, but I don't want to embarrass anyone. So give me an example. Anybody can give me an example of something they do every day, which they think they can simplify. Okay. We got someone. Yes. Uh, Nanita, go ahead. What is your example, Nanita? Tell me. Unmute your microphone. Go ahead. You need to unmute your microphone, please, Nanita. Mr. Govin, can you help her unmute her microphone, please, sir? Go ahead. Yes, Hi, Nanita. Sir. Yeah. What is Just one putting, thing that you could simplify? Putting makeup every day. Not putting makeup every day. Well, no, women look beautiful in makeup. You still need to put makeup on, but you can simplify how you put it on, right? Yes or no? Yes. Very good. Thank you, Nanita. At least you're creative. And now I've got somebody else that's going to be creative. Mr. Armstrong, you're smiling. Tell me, what is something that you do every day, but you forget about being simple? You're smiling, so you're full of ideas. Come on, tell me about it. Don't be shy. Yes, sir. yes, sir. Uh, I think every single day I do, like uh, doing exercise, I forget. I just try and walk off. I don't know what the right. process of that going Let me through. ask you a question, Min. Do you have a girlfriend? Yes. Do you have a girlfriend? Yes, uh, All right. No, I don't and have. You don't have. All right. That's a very good example. Me and Mr. Amala, I give you some guidance. Can I ask you a question? Have you ever asked yourself why you don't have a girlfriend? Ever. Any? Have you asked yourself? Yes, sir. Sometimes I'm thinking about myself. Why I All don't right. Have a okay. Girlfriend. I'll tell you why. I'm going to answer it. Because when you go to meet girls, you complicate things. Do you understand what I mean? It. Instead of yes, going sir. up to the girl and saying, hey, look, you're really good looking. Can I buy you a coffee? Okay. <laughs> but most guys have a natural tendency to be shy. They talk to their friend. Hey, how am I going to get her attention? And his friend says, well, go there, drop your keys and walk, and then ignore and walk away. And if she really cares about you, she'll pick up the keys, right? But you forget that the girl might be wearing a mini skirt and she doesn't want to bend over because if she bends over, everybody else will start looking at her and she's not going to pick up your keys anyway. And then what do you say? Oh, she doesn't like me. No good. I can't find a girlfriend. You go to the bar, you drink, you go home, you go back to bed. Your mother asks you the next morning, Min, are you going to get married soon? No, Mama, I don't have a girlfriend. Help me, Mama. All right? Okay? Just hypothetically. Yeah. So what I'm trying to say, Min, is sometimes we forget to simplify things, right? 
okay we forget to simplify things and you know women do this all the time don't get upset girls i'm only using an example nothing against you women procrastinate i mean you know what procrastinate means men women have a habit yeah, yeah. to delay things yeah, yeah. all right i'm sure your mother does it your sister does it they do it all the time right okay so what yeah, happens sir. the girls go to buy a pair of shoes amala's wife does it i'm sure she goes to buy a pair of shoes she looks for two hours she comes home and amala says where's the shoes i didn't find anything i liked next day she calls her girlfriend they go out again she comes home oh i need to go to delhi to buy shoes there's nothing in the all the shoe shops in this town right and what happens is su su liang takes one month to buy a simple pair of shoes so she can go to work why because she doesn't want to simplify the process all she really needs is a cute pair of flat shoes that's going to let her go to the office every day and not got sore feet but no they complicate it the shoes are too high it doesn't look cute i saw the other girls wearing something cuter and they complicate it they procrastinate does everybody understand what i mean by simplify okay i'll give yes. you one more yes. example i'm going to give you one more example min about you all right min when you go out yes. to buy clothes min when you go out to buy t-shirt and jeans yes. do you buy them at the yes. same time or not no 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 i'm not buying at the same time i'm not buying at the same time but that's why your life is complicated you need to simplify oh. it every time you buy a t-shirt you must buy the denim that goes with it every time really, you buy so socks you must buy the t-shirt to go with the socks it's oh, true i never used to think like that i never used to think like that why because i don't have not money to buy both at the same time well hopefully after this lesson you're going to make money and then you can but everybody what i'm trying to do is show you how simple things can be do you understand yeah. that right. yeah it's can right. i give you one more example girls all you girls listen to me even mr min every time mr min goes to a salon or every time su liang goes to a salon every time michelle goes to get her new look for the month she goes to the salon and she says to the stylist i don't know what i want show me some different pictures what color should i use what blah 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 and the poor stylist has to wait 10 minutes explaining to her then she'll say how much why where when what happens if it doesn't look good and the poor guy wastes 20 minutes he's got 20 other clients waiting right now she could simplify it you could simply say hey you're the expert you look really good so you make me look good make me look young do whatever you want your budget is $200 all right that simplifies it now what might happen as the result of that simplicity is that su liang might walk out thinking that she is the cutest looking young girl that she's ever been but if she didn't let him suggest she would never have known because she was living in this complex world where she thought she knows everything am i right or wrong come on i'm not picking on you su i'm trying to give use you as an example forgive me is that all right okay do you agree with me su liang unmute your microphone and answer me do you agree with me yeah i agree with you <laughs> okay it's only an example don't get upset with me all right only an example all right so everybody does that i do it too every time i go to buy my wife a diamond every anniversary it takes me three days to decide on which diamond and then i walked into a jeweler recently for the anniversary that's coming up or that just finished and i said to him i need a diamond he said mr wally why do you have to complicate it last year was your 38th anniversary this year is your 39th anniversary so it has to be one carat more you don't need to complicate it this is how much it's going to cost you how are you paying this year thank you yeah i know amala okay i bought the diamond it cost me two thousand dollars more and my wife loved it but in previous years i used to look for two weeks it used to drive me crazy because i was afraid she wouldn't like the diamond all right simplicity okay now let's talk about transparency all right where are you mr min you're the example again switch on your microphone min i'm gonna put min to the test everybody listen carefully min and yes, you sir. better listen lam dong as well all you guys better listen min when you go out to a nightclub or a bar trying to pick up a girlfriend 
what's your line? What do you say usually? Uh, uh yes, I'm. Should we date like that? Should we go? Come, uh, no, give me a, a proper line. What do you say? You walk up to the girl. What do you say? I've got eighty girls in this class that are listening to you. Give me a quick line. Hurry up. Or do you want the girls to teach you? Uh, yes, go to the, let's go to the bar. I, I, I got to treat you something. Like can that. I buy you a drink, right? Can, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can not, I buy you okay. a drink? Okay, yes. can I buy you a drink? Very good. You kept it simple. But I want you to start doing that from now on, Min. So in two weeks' time, you tell me you found a girlfriend, all right? Okay. Does yeah, yeah, anybody yeah, want to yeah. teach Min what to say? Does, do any of the girls have a line that they could give Min? Any girls here? Come on, help him. What's the line that he could use? Okay, hold on. We've got one, Min. Listen. Go ahead, Selena. What could he say? Open your microphone, Selena. How could he do it? Hi, you look nice today. You look nice to your clothes. Something like that. Okay. okay. Thank you. And that would be being transparent. <laughs> because no, that's transparency. Why is it transparent? Because the reason you're buying her a drink, Min, is because you liked how she looks, right? Am I right or wrong? Yes, yes. But if she was you the look wrong good. look, would you buy her a drink? No. Am I right or wrong? Yes or no? Yeah, yeah, you're right. Totally right. Okay. okay. All right. So do you all understand what I mean by being honest and transparent? It gets you to the result quicker. All right. So I want you to take those personal experiences and think of how they will affect if you're trying to run a business. Let me go back to my PowerPoint, please. Okay, here we go. So we've learned about what the meaning of transparency is and simplicity is, right? So let's summarize it. Transparency in a business governance context is honesty, openness. Remember that, Min? Honesty, openness. You look at the girl, she's wearing a dress and she looks really nice and you really like her look. So why lie about it? Hi, you know what? I'm really, really, really stunned. You're beautiful. Do you mind if I buy you a drink? By you being simple and transparent, you might actually get an answer, right? And listen, Min, I learned the hard way. When I was at university, the first dance I went to, there was a bunch of girls from Korea at the bar. Stupid me took my Blackberry and dropped it on the floor, hoping they'd pick it up to me. Guess what one of them did? She stepped on my Blackberry and walked away. And she left her shoe in my Blackberry. And she said, is it my fault you're stupid and you dropped your Blackberry? I didn't see it. It's dark. Okay. All right. So I learned the hard way. All right. Good. So transparency in a business or governance context is honesty and openness. In general, transparency is the equality of being easily seen through. The meaning of transparent is a little different in a computer science context, coming closer meaning to invisible or undetectable. So if Min Armstrong wanted to put nasty comments about a girl on Facebook, he would use a different name and a different photo so they could never recognize him. So transparency on a computer can be played with. It's not invisible or undetectable, all right? But in life, being transparent means being detectable, being honest, and being visible, all right? Do you understand that, everyone? Okay. Transparency is the quality of being easily seen through, while transparency in a business or governance context refers to being open and honest with your customer, with your staff, with your supplier, and with yourself. Yes, Su Liang, with yourself. Yes, with yourself, Selena. If you as a business owner cannot be honest and accept the reasons for your business failure, then you are failing yourself. Because the reason a business fails is because of the, the person running the business. It's not because of the people that work for you. It's because you, as the business founder, you as the CEO, do not practice what we call simplicity and transparency to drive your team to perform. A part of corporate governance best practices 
This requires disclosure of all relevant information so that others can make informed decisions. You all know that in multinational companies, they have a habit that every week or every month, the managing director or CEO sends a newsletter to all the staff telling them about what's happening in the company. He's transparent. Okay. You all understand that? Yeah. Okay, good. Excellent. So does everybody understand what I mean by the word transparency? The more transparent you are to the people who work for you, the more transparent you are in the way you want to market your product or service, the more transparent you are in how you're going to do it, the more transparent you are to your creative people, your R&D people in developing the product about what you want, the more simple you make the instructions, the better the results will become. You understand that, everyone? Yes or no? So, Alice, just think of it this way. If you say to the people that work for you, I want you to design three new types of handbags for our female customers. And you simply say three new handbags. And I want them in three new exciting colors. Now, what did Alice do? She thought she was being simple, but she wasn't. She caused them a headache. She told them three handbags. She didn't tell them what sort of handbags. Casual, semi-casual, formal or extremely formal, okay? She didn't tell them middle price range, upper price range, or extremely expensive. She didn't tell them fabric, nylon, plastic, or leather. She didn't tell them. So was her instruction simple? No. Was it transparent? No. Because these poor guys are going to work on it for six months, and they're going to come back to her. And what's Alice going to say? Hello, guys, what are you doing here? Since when do our customers buy nylon handbags? But you didn't give us the correct instructions. Do you understand what I mean by that in business? Yes or no? All right. Now, tell me, when Steve Jobs developed the blueprint for them to build the Apple Mac, do you think he was simple and transparent? He was. He was, he was right down to what color the Apple Mac should look like, how big it should be. When the Apple Mac computer first came out, you could buy it in blue, pink, orange, yellow, purple. The reason he did that was deliberate because he wanted to attract a new generation of people to buy this good looking computer, which would be part of the furniture in their home. All right, but Steve Jobs was different to Alice as the example suggested, he gave clear instructions of what color he wanted the Apple Mac to be, what software he wanted it. He gave clear instructions of what he wanted. And what happened? He delivered an Apple Mac. Let's go on. All right, sorry about this, guys. Just bear with me for a moment. Um, let me sh share my slides again. Okay. Oh, why isn't that sharing? One moment, please. No, resume slideshow. Okay, so transparency. Transparency as a part of court governance is best practice, but this requires being able to disclose all the relevant information so your human capital can implement it. Your suppliers understand it and your customers see through you and are believing in what you have to say to them. Transparency at its core is showing or sharing the inner workings and decisions of your business to outsiders, telling your customers about your new products, about the fact that you plan to become environmentally friendly, that you increased your price because there was an increase by your suppliers. Be honest, be transparent. Let's look at a transparency model, which you all should memorize. Number one, number one starts with motivation. This is the manner that is ethical and consistent with stakeholders' interests. So you need to be motivated to share the right information that will help them or motivate the people to buy from you 
to work with you or to actually work for you. You have to be honest and open and disclose all the information that will enable them to do their job or influence them in doing their job. Number three, stakeholder participation. Engage those interested. The people that are not interested should not be working for you. It means you've employed the wrong people. Number four, relevance. Share information all the way down if you're at the top or if you're at the middle share it all the way up and then all the way down relevance number five clarity simplicity another word for simplicity is clarity share information that is easily understood and easily obtained credibility share positive and negative information, not only the positive, but also the negative. That will actually keep the people that are going to work for you and your customers informed. All right. Remember, when you're credible, you build integrity. If you're not credible, you lack integrity and you lack a sense of honesty to your customers and transparency and you might lose customers because they don't trust you or trust your business and number seven is accuracy share information that is truthful objective reliable and complete remember workplace transparency is all about open communication between the leader and the employees at work it's when the leadership or you, the entrepreneur, makes a sole commitment, a promise to yourself and the people that work for you to keep them openly informed of what your expectations are, of what mistakes they make, of what setbacks or losses they cause the business, to hold them accountable and to also keep them advised of how much money the business is making as profit and what other metrics you're going to offer them as rewards example incentives or pay increments in return for this transparency the people who work for you will commit to asking you questions and getting information off you which will motivate them and help them feel comfortable in giving you feedback and overcoming challenges and they will be more comfortable sharing ideas with you but more importantly they will be loyal to you Okay, so part of all this, part of all this, okay, part of all this comes back to what? Part of all this comes back to being transparent, okay? And in order to be transparent, you have to be simple. And we've said that being simple and transparent involves sharing information with people. Am I right or wrong? Now, do you all remember, in order to properly communicate information, what are some of the important elements that affect the way we communicate? Who can tell me? Now, you've all learned this before. So if anybody doesn't know, that's because you forgot. So what are the elements of effective, active communication and active listening? Who can tell me? Anyone know? Come on, everybody. Don't go to sleep on me. Amala knows, but it's no point asking him. Okay. All right. Anybody else can tell me. Come on. Sue Mayatoni, can you tell me what are the elements of active communication? Can you tell me, Sue? No. T. Kim, can you tell me? Come on, someone. Put up your hand. L okay. I've got one hand gone up. Hold on. Now I've got two hands. All right. Manolin, tell me, what are the elements of effective communication? Um, I can give some. Um, yeah, go. Yeah, I'm active listening. Okay, what is involved in active listening? Tell me. Yeah, it's uh, uh, listening with understanding. Very good. You've learned something. Good. Excellent. And what else is important in communication? Um, it's like... Asking questions, being interactive. 
Good, excellent. But you've forgotten one word. Starts with two words. The first word starts with B. The second word starts with L. B. B for boy. L for Larry. What is the? What's that element? It's two words. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> ah, wake up. Body language. <laughs> Body language. Our body non, language, yes, yes. Non verbal yes, language, communication, yes. right? Does yes. everybody remember that? Yes, yes. Juan yes, Loyola, you remember that one? Why didn't you put up your hand, Juan? Why are you shy, young man? Okay, good. All right. Do you remember that, Jocelyn? Okay, why didn't you put up your hand, Jocelyn? Stop being shy. Put up your hand, gorgeous. Sanda, did you remember that? Active communication, active listening. Yes, Sunda, good girl. All right, let's go back. Um, let's go back to my presentation. Okay, so active listening. What do we mean by active listening? Listening is not sitting in silence waiting for your turn to speak. Rather, it is turning off the me mind and turning on the you mind. So instead of just thinking that you know everything and being a head full of mashed potatoes, you need to switch off the mashed potatoes and switch off the switch on the green spinach. So you need to start thinking of you, the person you're talking to, not of me. Because if you are pre-convinced or you already made up your mind and you're thinking me, you're not communicating. Okay, you're hearing. In active listening, one listens to another's story and its nuances, thus subtle difference in meaning or opinion or attitude that might help me change the way I do things or make more profit. It is important to pay attention to the person you're talking to, the interviewee, look the person directly in the eyes, attending to their words, listening to their intonation, their voice, okay? Looking at their facial expression and copying their body language to a certain extent. Does everybody understand that? Yes or no? All right, now let's go on. Active listening. Let's talk about active listening. Active listening requires you to use open and closed questions to clarify and to summarize using the reflective questions. It means you need to show interest, you need to listen for feelings, you need to use motivating statements to signal encouragement. You need to be careful for nonverbal signals like they scratch their nose or scratch their face because they don't believe you. You need to avoid interrupting while the other party's speaking. You need to probe to get more information so you understand what they're talking about. How do you probe? By asking open and closed questions. You need to reflect by reflecting with the reflective question. And you need to avoid being prejudiced and thinking you know all. Does everybody understand what I mean by active listening? Wave your hands for me, please. Come on, everyone, wave your hands. Manolin, do you understand? Manolin, Bursa? Wave your hand. Manika, do you understand? Wave your hand. Good girl. All right. Active listening. Maybe you should all take a photo of this, especially the young man. Take a photo of this. Might help you um, next time you go to a bar or a nightclub. Active listening. Okay. Active listening. If not in the same room, if you're talking to people over the phone, or via the internet, visualize them. Imagine that they're sitting in front of you. Imagine what they look like. Imagine the environment they're in. That will make it easier for you to communicate with them one-to-one, -one. all right? Understand that, everyone? So if you're talking to a business partner who's currently in Israel where there's a war with Palestine, remember that this guy's hiding in a, in a dungeon He's afraid of a bomb landing on his building, but he's still doing business, living under the ground, 10 stories under the ground in a safe house. You need to imagine. You need to visualize who you're talking to. Now, let's talk about the barriers in active listening. What are the barriers? What can stop us 
from actively listening and effectively communicating, Selena? What can stop us? Okay. It could be that you're drunk, you can't hear, but I'm sure that's not the case. So what are the barriers? Let me read through them. It could be cultural barriers because you don't understand the culture. It could be physical barriers because the other person is deaf and you don't realize it. It could be complex responses because you failed to ask enough questions to understand the responses. It could be inapt nonverbal cues. It could be that the other person was getting bored, scratching their nose, shaking their ear, scratching their face because they didn't understand what you're saying, but you did not detect that and you did not try to understand that, okay? It could be um, pretend comprehension where you think you know everything. You think of me, not you, the person you're talking to. And because you pretend you know, you don't know anything. It could be that the questions you asked were not simple. They were not transparent. The person you were asking the question didn't understand the question, therefore gave you the wrong response. And the other barrier is taking the spotlight because a lot of you now think that you should be the star of every meeting. You should be the star of every communication. You need to step back and the person you're communicating with should be the star of every communication. All right. And the other one is stereotyped reactions. Stereotype. We just had a stereotype here, right? What was the stereotype? Where's my friend? Where's my friend that wants to find a girlfriend? Min. Min gave us a stereotype answer, right? When he goes to a nightclub, he says, oh, can I buy you a drink? Stereotype. Because that's what every boy does, especially when he's trying to look for his first girlfriend. Okay? But is it simple enough? Is it transparent enough? No. Why you want to buy me a drink? I don't want to drink with you. You want to you need to be transparent. So if he's transparent, he says, Hi, you're beautiful tonight. I love your dress. I tell you what, the pink suits your personality. Would can I buy you a drink? He's now being honest and transparent. And he's not being stereotyped like every other boy that comes through the nightclub. Do you understand that, Min Armstrong? Okay. All right. Does everybody understand what I mean? Sir Wa, do you understand what I mean? Sir Wa? Good girl. Excellent. Hermina, do you understand what I said? Hermina Gonzalez? Good. Excellent. Uh, Muhammad, Muhammad Yusuf, do you understand what I said, Muhammad? Muhammad Yusuf, do you understand? Okay, Muhammad Yusuf is not listening to me. Okay, Sunda, do you understand? Yes, Sunda or no Sunda? You understand, good, all right, good. All right, so let's go on. Um, Din, you, do you understand what I said, Din? You're shaking your hair, Din, and I can see this beautiful girl sitting there with her hand under her face. Do you understand what I explained, Din? Good girl. All right. What about you, Mr. Dawa Dawa? Do you understand? Yes, Dawa or no Dawa? Okay, Dawa understands. All right, let me go back to my presentation. All right, so remember, guys, remember, guys, that barriers to communication are really important and you should be aware of these barriers because if you're not aware of them, you will not be able to effectively communicate with simplicity and being transparent. When you communicate and when you're actively listening, you also need to prioritize the information you're gathering by gathering the right information in the right order of priority. This entails figuring out what has to be done, what questions you need to ask, putting them in a logical order so you get the answers in the right order. Transparency in the 21st century business model. All right, why do you need it? In order for any business to need to be transparent in the 21st century, Transparency must be a part of your core values, a part of your company policy that everybody needs to be transparent. 
You need to encourage people to be honest about the difficult situations they face in doing their job. You need to encourage people to ask anything. Some companies have an ask me anything session with the GM or one of the board members once every month. You need to have an open door policy about access to information, which can help people in the company run your business. And you should always have a why to everything that happens to motivate people to tell you why they were successful and why they're failing so you can train them so they can be successful. You need to make sure that everybody in the company is involved in the decision making. And that means being transparent and keeping the management process simple so everybody in the company understands it and feels as they're part of it. You need to be transparent about losses, profits, and successes. And you make sure that you have regular updates weekly at minimum. By making information or data readily available to the people who work for you and your customers, you as a leader or a manager can hold the people who work for you accountable because you have told them and they understand. But if you keep secrets and they don't know, then you cannot openly hold them accountable because that would be unfair. So through transparency, you ensure that every step the organization takes is in its own best interest because everybody in the organization understands the organization's current business, current predicament, current profitability or current losses and what efforts they're making to become profitable again. So what is an effective transparency strategy? Very simple. Be honest and admit when you don't know an answer. Don't fake one. Acknowledge when you're wrong. It's better to admit that you're wrong then have people tell you that you are wrong and call you a liar for making excuses. It all comes back to good active listening, which is the core of active and good communication skills. If you practice proper communication two way, you shouldn't rattle anyone in upper management because that means you're communicating from the middle to the top and from the top down. Always explain anything that you communicate to your team or any decisions that you make. Be honest and be transparent. Transparency, remember, is all about openness, communication and accountability. Another way to explain transparency is simply don't tell bullshit. Don't hide anything. If you don't love your girlfriend, tell her and let her move on. If you don't want to marry your boyfriend, tell him and tell him, listen, I just want to have fun, but I can never marry you. Let him move on. That is what we call honesty and transparency. Let's talk about governance, corporate governance. And this corporate governance applies to any business or any company. Accountability, fairness, transparency, and independence. Does everybody know what these mean? Does anybody know what they mean? Yes or no? Do you all understand what they mean? Yes or no? Wave your hands. Could everybody see my slides? Wave your hands. Yeah? Okay. So what does it mean? What does it mean? Okay. What it means is that every company has a responsibility to make sure that these core values are applied, okay? Okay, how much is important? Why is it important? Let's look at these again. Let me share. What is important in the company's core values? You have to be accountable. So 
to hold people in your company accountable, it's important to deliver messages that are simple and transparent. Because if you don't do that, they cannot be accountable. You have to show fairness. Don't hold them accountable unless you've told them. And by being accountable and by being fair, you need to be transparent. And through transparency, you're empowering your staff to be independent and to feel like they have authority to work. They feel like you're motivating them and you're telling them that I trust you, you can do the work, independence. Do you understand that, everyone? Okay, good. Let's go on. The next one is about the four pillars of cooperative governance. What is cooperative governance? Cooperative governance is where you need to work together. Success for the whole organization. Now, in order for the organization to be successful, um, let me just make my screen bigger. Could you allow me one moment, please? Just one moment. Back. So what we said before is accountability, fairness, transparency, and independence. And we said that in order to achieve this, the whole organization needs to apply this through cooperative, cooperative governance. What does cooperative mean? Cooperate with one another. Now, teaming means the staff, the GM, the CEO, the board, and members, owners, or operators, or people that are related to the ownership of the company have to be involved in being transparent all the way from the top down. Democracy, the staff, the GM, the CEO, and the board, again, have to be involved. Strategic leadership also has to go from the top down and accountable empowerment. So when you make it simple, when you're transparent to everyone, you're basically involving the team, you're teaming. When you let everybody become involved and ask questions and give feedback, you're being democratic, democracy. And by allowing the people in the team to take accountability and you outsource that leadership down the line so everybody in the company feels empowered that's what we call strategic because you're giving people the power to make decisions and capture business rather than wait for you to make all the decisions okay and when you're being transparent from the top down you're basically saying that now that you know i can hold you accountable it's being giving them the power to do the work, empowerment, but they're accountable when they take the power. Okay, and then there's what we call trust. Okay, whenever you share information, you have to remember, is the information breaches privacy laws? You should be very careful. You need to have ethical responsibility about not sharing information that could ruin somebody's life or cause them a divorce. You need to be ethical. You need to be transparent and share all the information you need to share that may impact on the way the people who work for you or on your customers in doing business. And you should always be honest about security involved in providing the information and how that information should be shared to what level and what information the people who work for you can share with suppliers or customers and what they can't. You need to have four pillars of trust, ethics and responsibility, privacy control, transparency and accessibility, security and stability. So now that we understand, let's go back and relate simplicity to transparency. 
simplicity is not just about minimalism or the absence of clutter. It is about deeply understanding the essence of the organization, its human capital, product or service, and being able to eliminate the parts that are not essential. It takes a lot of hard work to make something simple. And today, business people and leaders must figure out, understand and accept that this is their mark on true creativity. If you as a leader can't simplify things, if you can't be open and transparent and communicate that to empower the people that work for you and be able to hold them accountable, then you failed as a leader. Go and work for someone. For many leaders, managers and or supervisors, all right, for many, even for people who are secretaries, PAs, it is an old picture, but still valid. They still think of it as developing something simple is extremely hard work for them because it takes too much thinking. They don't want to be creative. They can't be bothered. They're lazy. They're full of mush. Complexity can be created easily, but creating something which is completely intuitive and simple to use or simple to apply is very hard. Let me go back to the example I gave Selena before. Hello, Selena. Where are you there? What's the example I gave you before, Selena? Open your microphone. Yes, sir. Give me an example about doing something simply. Give me an example. Simply, CP, sir. Yeah. An example is about like Anything. personal. Ah, okay, sir. Um, for daily life. Yeah. Like. Uh, what you said is about the grocery shopping when you go okay. to the grocery instead of you just buy what you need you will just go around and look for everything else and whose so choice is that just... is that your choice or the supermarket my choice sir. right so can i ask you whose fault is it if you run late to get home because you spent two hours at the supermarket the supermarket yes. manager or yours your mind mine. very good <laughs> excellent thank you thank you for that selena all right let's go back okay all right so complexity is your enemy any fool can make something complicated it is hard to make something simple said richard branson does everybody know richard branson sir richard branson who knows sir richard branson all right selena tell me who is sir richard branson the owner of the Coca-Cola, sir, and the Virgin Island. I think he, he wrote yeah. the Virgin yeah. Way. Yeah, he wrote book. the Virgin Way. He owns Coca-Cola license in the Virgin Islands. You're right. But what else is he famous for? He's ver famous for Virgin Atlantic Airways, Virgin Records, Virgin Music, Virgin Mobile. He's got Virgin. Oh, very good. It's a very good book. I've read it 11 times. Good on you. Read it and read it every month, okay? Keep referring to it, okay? Good girl. The Virgin Way. Okay. Richard Branson, ladies and gentlemen, is one of England's most successful businessmen. And right now, he is Sir Richard Branson. He was knighted by the Queen many years ago for his success, all right? Okay, so let's go on. Simplicity in the 21st century model. In terms of business, simplicity is a simple focused agenda to eliminate unnecessary ineffective processes, to streamline operations and focus a company's collective energy on developing the business strategically rather than just using a growth measure. Remember what I said to one of your fellow students before, uh, Manoline, about building a handbag. If she gave clear instructions to the staff about the handbag she wanted them to design, they would design the handbag for the right market. But if she doesn't give simple instructions and gives them vague instructions, they're not going to design what is suitable for market. The goal of business in today's 21st century management reflects a shift from making money for the firm to an obsession with creating value for the customer. Everyone in the organization today more than ever needs to focus their work 
on delivering value for the customer. So tell me, everybody, before I ask my co-host, Mr. Amala, who knows the answer. In order to make money, can you make money if you're not focused? No. Can you make money if you don't have a product or service? No. Can you make money if you don't have a team that can deliver your product or service? No. So let me ask you, what do you need to make money? You need to be creative. You need to be customer centric. You need to be product centric. You need to be service centric. Everybody write this down. Product centric. Service centric. Customer centric. Price centric. Feedback centric. Did everybody write that down? Who can repeat them for me? Who can repeat them? Come on. Who can repeat the centrics? Okay. All right. Let me go back and find somebody with their hand up. Okay. T. Kim, T. Kim Tan, what are the centrics that I just gave you? So we have the product centric. Good. Service centric. Yes. Customer centric. Yes. Feedback centric. Very good. So let me explain them. First, you have to be customer centric to know what your customers want and what product they're looking for. Then you have to be product centric to develop the product suited to customer needs. So when I say customer centric, you need to be customer centric. And if you're customer centric, you also have to be market centric. So customer centric slash market centric. Once you've done that, you have to be product centric. Then you have to be price centric to offer the product at the right price to the right market. And then you have to be customer centric because serve customer service centric, sorry, service centric or call it customer service centric. Better you call it service centric. So service centric, you need to understand how the customer wants you to provide the service. What level of service does he want? Does he want to talk to you on the phone? Does he want to buy online or does he want to visit your shop? Do you understand that, everyone? Let me come back to a famous example I always use. Okay, let me come back. Where is my friend? Uh, where's Mr. Tim Wan? Are you there? Okay, I don't know where he's gone. All right, let me go back to this. Okay, example. If I go to a shop to buy a shirt, when I go into the shop, what do I look for? I don't want to be served by another man. I want to be served by a woman. Why? Because a woman will know what shirt looks good on me. Another man cannot sell me a shirt that looks good on me. He wouldn't know. Only a woman knows what I'd look good in. So when I go to buy a shirt, I expect the service from a female sales assistant. But if you're selling a fashion product to men and all the people in the shop are men, then you probably don't understand your customer service expectations or you're not service centric. Do you understand that everyone? Yes or no? And it's the same when the average girl goes to a hairdressing salon and there's two salons in the road. One is operated through, th with three old women who um, have been hairdressers for 25 years and know nothing about current fashion. And the other one is a young salon with three young, good-looking uh, Korean guys, full of muscle, very tight black T-shirt, beautiful leather pants, okay? And they're all wearing expensive jewelry. And the girl looks at the stylist and says, wow. And why does she go into that shop for her nail polish and hairdo? It's not because of the shop. It's not because of the price. It's no longer relevant. It's because of the guys that work in that shop, right? And what is she expecting? She's expecting that they will understand what is going to make her look cute, what is going to make her look sexy, what is going to make her look young. 
because of the way they're dressed. Do you understand that, everyone? It's called about being service-centric, understanding what level of service or type of service your customer wants in return for the product that you're delivering. Do you understand that, everyone? Yes or no? Do you understand that, Alice? Wave your hand, Alice. I can't hear you, gorgeous. Good on you. Okay. Do you understand that, um, Albert? Tabby? Okay. Where's the girl with the supermarket chain? Do you understand that, Alviana? Yes. Ray Rentis. Do you understand it, Ray Rentis? Ray Rentis, are you awake? Okay. Ray Rentis must be working. Cynthia, do you understand what I said? Okay, now A, now A, Ruo, you understand what I said now? Okay, wave your hand now. Good girl, excellent. Okay, Michelle, uh, Michelle Labapez, La do you understand? Good, excellent. Okay, Selena, Selena Quimson, do you understand what I just said? All right, you're going to sleep on me, Selena. I'm getting worried about you. Um, Raina, Raina Dijodi, do you understand what I just explained, Raina? Good girl, Raina. Where's my friend Daniel? Is he here today? Hello, Daniel. Are you there? Can you say hello to me, Daniel? Hello, Mr. Wally. How are you, Mr. Mutiwa? It's nice to see you again. Have you found today's subject interesting or helpful? More than interesting. Very helpful. So can I ask you, do you believe in practicing transparency and simplicity in daily practice? Yes. Yes, and indeed. Do, do you find it effective, Daniel? Very effective. And Very tell me, effective. how simple do you have to be when you're talking to staff in your part of the world? Can you be reasonably simple or do you have to be very simple? Uh, you have to be uh, very simple. And can you tell me, does it save you time when you're simple rather than coming back and correcting it? It saves a lot of time. Okay. Thank you for that, Daniel. I hope you have a great weekend, Daniel. Thank you for joining me today, sir. It's a great pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. So when you're talking about simplicity and transparency, in some cultures, you need to be simple. In some cultures, you need to be transparent. Do you understand that, everyone? In actual fact, simplicity and transparency is the best practice in every part of the world, in any culture, in any race, in any world, in any country, even on the moon for astronauts. Okay, let's go on. All right, let's go on, guys. Remember, the hierarchy of interaction in any organization should be, one, why? By telling them simply what are the goals, how you want them to do the work, that they are the principles and goals. Why? How are the processes? How do you want to achieve the work? Innovation, creativity, HR hiring the wrong people, enough money, process. And what are the practices that you're going to implement? What are you going to do? What are you going to sell? Okay. Does everybody understand that? And this goes around in circles. Goal, product or service, process, practice in delivering it. What are you delivering? Why are you delivering it? How are you delivering it? Let me talk about the evolution in the 21st century management of Amazon. I want you to look at this very clearly and learn from it. Take a picture of this and put it on the wall. Amazon 2002, okay, Apple iMac. Customer recipient, consumer products. Okay, let's go on. And this was with no ecosystem. At that point, Amazon had no ecosystem. Okay, single firm loyalty. Okay, Amazon Prime introduced a loyalty program. Customer recipients, single firm ecosystem, 
through Amazon's website, customer convenience. Remember when they started, they only had product. As we move down the line, they went into more to meet 21st century expectations. They went into services. It became Amazon Marketplace, Apple iTunes, Apple App Store are all now available through Amazon. Customer recipient, multiple firm ecosystems. Not only do they have Amazon's Marketplace, they also have Apple iTunes for Amazon customers and Apple App Store for Amazon customers. And they still now not only provide customer convenience, but they provide Amazon customer service. So if customers have a problem, they can get resolution. Remember at the beginning, they were customer product centric. Then they became more market centric by adding a larger ecosystem. Then they became more market centric and now they're customer centric service centric and product centric because they deliver a service experience that exceeds each and every customer's expectations. Let's talk about the comparison of the 20th century compared to the 21st century. In the 20th century, it was a high percentage manufacturing industry. Today, high percentage of service industries that deliver products or services to customers. Emphasis was on financial expertise and profitability. Now it's on managing processes and delivering a customer experience. Previously, it was on the domestic market. Now companies aim for the international market. Number four, legitimate authority in hierarchical organization structure. Now we work through virtual teams, through Zoom, through Teams, and we have a network of organizational structures around the world. Clearly defined operating procedures. Now our operating procedures are simpler, they're transparent, they're fluid, they're reactive, and everybody understands them. We had well-defined industry boundaries. Now we have more than well-defined industry boundaries. We have industry boundaries that service everybody in the organization. They're simple, people are empowered, and they're held accountable. Previously, we had a fairly constant market. Now our market is very much turbulent because customers have too many choices, whether online through e-commerce or other. Before, customers relied on brick and mortar stores. Now they have a choice of virtual offices, virtual stores, and some of the best e-commerce solutions in the world, like Amazon. Communication was slow and unreliable. Now communication is instant through online platforms, through working online, and instances or instantaneous responses. You can chat with Amazon customer service and they can resolve your problem in seconds, no longer by email and months. Technology growth emerging. Now technology is no longer growth. It's, ex it's gone to a stage where it's now, it's exponential um, growth. So exponential growth means it's continually growing. Many employees with similar responsibilities and skills. Now we have many employees that are empowered with unique responsibilities and skills. Thank you to simplicity and transparency. So what that is telling us in today's world is that the 21st century leader, CEO, is anyone who is willing to learn and practice what they have learned. Being simple, being transparent, being honest, empowering the people that work for them, communicating. The 21st century leader or CEO raises modern day millionaires through extreme creativity, resulting in simplicity and transparency. In short, being flexible, open to change and reactive means being agile. Agile is a concept borrowed from software engineering and design meaning an agile approach allows leaders to adapt quickly to change, to understand, 
to work with different personality, different types of situations and adapt quickly. You can only do that by having a simple and transparent avenue of communication from the company's hierarchy, from the top to the bottom and from the bottom to the top. Let's look at this. Look at the leader. The leader pulls and people follow. He leads. The manager pushes and people run away. Look at that. So today, in the 21st century, if you are not a leader that leads through creativity, honesty, and transparency, your business will fail. And that I can promise you. This is the way forward. This is the way forward. This one means fail. You, you become a manager, you're destined for failure. Destined for failure. Destined for failure. Today, you need to be leaders. You need to be leaders who are after success. All right? You need to be leaders who are after being successful. Does everybody understand that? Okay, leaders who want to be successful. The 21st century CEO believes in three words, and I call them the RSI of 21st century leadership. Write these down. He relates, leaders need to make shift from production-based management to people-centric management, relating with teams to better drive performance through honesty, simplicity and transparency and through open communication he needs to create leaders need to create simple and transparent new ways of working and introduce new creative processes that redefine standards and generate strategies that work today creativity last one is the i and i call it instigate change disrupt the world Leaders need to be at the forefront of change. And to be at the forefront of change, you need to be eccentric and you need to be creative. Actively introducing and using new processes and motivating teams to change and accept change. All right, so let's go on. In the face of multiple emerging leadership and management challenges, remember, being agile is the cornerstone of 21st century leadership. In short, being flexible, open, creative, simple, transparent, and reactive are the key to the 21st century. Remember, guys, these three things you need to memorize. These should be your guide forever. R-C-I. This is a statement by my friend, Jeff Bezos, the man that I look up to. Only, one of the only, the only ways to get out of a tight box is to invent your way out, be creative. To get something new done, you have to be stubborn and focused to the point that others might find unreasonable. To invent, you have to be experimental. And if you know in advance that it's going to work, it's not an experiment. You keep doing it till it happens. What this is telling us, guys, what this is telling us, excuse me, just one moment, please. What this is telling us, folks, what it's telling us is that we go back to the word that I've told you so many times. And Mr. Um, Amala is going to be my excellent co-host, as he always is, and type the word eccentric in the chat box. Remember, eccentricity is to go out of your box. Eccentricity means stop living in your mother and father's shoes. Stop living in the box that you lived in when you were at high school. Stop living day to day thinking that you're poor and the world is going to end. Because the only reason who's poor is you. Because you're poor in planning your success. No one plans to fail. But all of you failed to plan. That's why you're poor. Stop blaming your government. For the love of God, don't tell me that your prime minister's corrupt or your government's economy is bad. 
It's because you are too lazy to do anything and help yourself get out of it. The government can't stop you as long as you have the right mindset. So the reason people fail is because they plan to fail. But people don't plan to succeed. So people don't want to fail. The reason people fail is because they plan to fail. And the reason they plan to fail is because they fail to plan for success. Do you understand that, everyone? And all of you are in that bracket because none of you are millionaires. Okay? Until Albert tells me that he's made his first million, for me, he's still got a long way to go. Do you agree with me, Albert? Okay? The day that Alice said she's made her first million is the day she's successful. I've already made it and lost it. So I'm I'm trying to do it again. All right. Michelle, do you understand that, Michelle? Don't go to sleep on me, Michelle. All right. Do you understand that, Muhammad Yusuf? Do you understand that, T. Kim? Do you understand that, Juliet Kiza? Rowena? Maricel? Okay, good. Do you understand this, Annalisa? Do you understand, Annalisa, that the only reason you fail is because you fail to plan? All right. Do you understand that, Trandin? Okay, good. Do you understand that, Ninja Zhao Xian? Yes or no? Good, excellent. Okay. Uh, Ray Rentis, do you understand what I've explained? Okay. What about you, Su Hyang? Do you understand? Everybody? I... I'm not seeing any movement. I'm really getting worried. Now, Yin, do you understand what I've just explained? Now, Yin? What about you, Manika? Do you understand? Manika, do you understand? Manika, why are you so shy? Just wave your hand. Thank you. Great. Excellent. What about you, Prashant? Prashant Sharma, do you understand? Thank you. Jelly? G Jelly, do you understand? Thank you, Jilai. Uh, where's my Mr. Friend, Vuang? Vuang, Vuang Don, do you understand? Wave your hand, Vuang. I can't see your head. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Vuang. Thank you. All right. Let's go back, guys. Let's go back to my presentation, if I may. Just bear with me for a moment, please. Okay, so remember, guys, transformational leadership is a leader who is driven by a strong passion for simplicity and innovation, creating change that grows an organization. A transformational leader, constantly focused on transparency to create change in the way their business decision-making is done. How employees' tasks are created out and how their organization's assets are handled through innovation. They improve the creativity and performance of employees through innovation, transparency, which leads to empowerment. Transformational leaders such as Jeff Bezos place a lot of trust in their trained employees to take decisions calculated in their assigned roles, thus encouraging creativity across the organization's workforce. Remember guys, Jeff Bezos is one of the richest men in the world. He's definitely the most successful e-commerce platform in the world. So if you don't believe me, believe Jeff. Through Jeff Bezos' transformational leadership style, he was able to create a customer-driven environment at Amazon by splitting his workforce into small teams, making them focus on different tasks and problems, and improving communication through simplicity and transparency across the organization. Amazon is now more than 22 countries. All right. This also served to create a healthy, transparent, and competitive environment among the employees, motivating them to push beyond their perceived capabilities toward achieving tasks and challenges assigned to them, because Jeff empowered them through simple instructions and transparency and gave them the power to decide and to run the business. And he reminded them that along the way, always 
evaluate the impact and consequences because now that I've been simple, now that I've been transparent, you are accountable. He reminded them that it's very important that when you work as part of a team, if you are a manager or a supervisor, delegate where need be, outsource. He told them, avoid multitasking while it may seem tempting. I've given different people the knowledge so that different people can actually be empowered to do different things. He told them, learn to say no. As long as we provide the Amazon level of service, money will come. Don't focus on money. Recognize your limits and provide the best service levels you can. Do not overcommit. Always work within the boundaries of what we've empowered you to do. Make sure that you plan your time and work efficiently. Remember that time is money and your job is to provide our customers the level of service excellence that they expect, not only what they expect, but beyond their expectation. If we do that, we will make money. No need to worry about money. Focus on delivering the service. Regularly review and update me through your management level. Don't be shy to tell us what you want. Tell us about how the business is running. And that's, what, that's why Jeff Bezos has a town hall with every Amazon worker around the world on a regular basis. He meets with his senior management almost on a daily basis. The management team around the world meet with their leadership or their supervisors and managers on a daily basis. The supervisors meet with their people on a daily basis. That's called keeping in touch, communicating, and being transparent and effective. He told them to always break down complex tasks, make them simple, and practice simplicity. He practices simplicity, so should they. Does everybody understand why today's lesson is so simple? It's simple because it's all about simplicity. Does everybody understand what I've said? Yes or no? Min Armstrong, what are you going to do differently the next time you go looking for a girlfriend? Tell me. Come yes. on, Min. I, I, yes, I hope sir. you're not getting upset with me. I'm talking to you because I admire you. You're a very serious student. I keep seeing you. So tell me and treat this as fun. What are you going to do the next time you go looking for a girlfriend? Yes. For the next time, when I look at her, I would say, yeah, girl, that you look beautiful. Can I let, let me find some drink for you? All right, but, good. Not, yeah, but be careful. Don't use some drink. Just say, can I buy you a drink? Because yeah, if yeah, you yeah. say some you? drinks, if you say some drinks, she might have 10 drinks and then say bye-bye, all right? So buy oh. one drink at a time. Okay, mate? Yes. Good yes. on you. I would good on my you. Mind, sir. All right. Good on you, mate. All right. Let me go to, can a young lady here tell me, what is she going to do differently now when she's going to be simple? Would any of the ladies like to share an example with me other than um, the young lady who's already shared two or three? Herminia Gonzalez. Hello, Herminia. How are you today? Where are you, Herminia? You ran away. Herminia, you shouldn't run away. I'm here to ask you, so I make sure you understand, Herminia. Can you share with me, Herminia, what you've understood about today's lesson? Are you there, Herminia? All right, Herminia. Um, I really worry when you run away. I hope you've understood the lesson. Herminia, you need to come out of your box. You need to have confidence to talk to me. I'm an academic. I'm here to teach, not for you to run away, Herminia. I hope you've enjoyed the lesson and I hope you understood it. And if you have any questions, please put a message in the chat box. All right, let's go on. Does anybody else have a question for me? Can you raise your hands? Alma, do you have a question? Alma Vidal? Hello, Alma. Open your microphone for me. Talk to me, Alma. 
Are you there, Elmer? Hello, Elmer. Unmute your microphone. Hi, Elmer. Where are you from? I'm from Philippines. And what have you learned today? Have you learned anything? Yeah, yes, yeah, sir. About uh, transparency. All right. And do you think it's going to help you in the future? Yes, yeah, sir. A lot. Okay. Thank you for attending. I look forward to seeing you at Biz Talk next week. Thank you so Thank you, much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Let's go back to um, the beginning. Anybody else would like to talk to me? Anyone raise your hand? No one wants to talk to me? My God, what have I done wrong today, Amala? Okay, um, Joven, where are you, Joven? Joven, you put your hand up, then you run away. You need to keep your hand up so I can see you. Hi, Joven, unmute your microphone. I'm here. <laughs> Good. What have you learned today, mate? Well, I just checked in at 6 o'clock because I, I came from my choreography. So right. I have to uh, get this uh, no, because it's a very important topic for me. Good, excellent. Uh, uh, I learned uh, what I learned today is actually the uh, the principles and goals, and of course, simplicity and transparency, and of course, uh, the the honesty. And uh, uh, I like your word, which is this is a good practice in the world. <laughs> so yeah. those things uh, I have learned because I'm going to uh, to apply that to what I'm doing right now in uh, in good. my work. Good on you, Joe. Transparency is really very important to very any good. organization. And this is also part of having a pillar in the organization. Yes. Yeah, that's Absolutely what I right. and, and by the way, <laughs> Sir Wally, uh, Doc Wally, or, <laughs> or, or CEO Wally, I'd no, like you, to ask if... Uh, yeah. You uh, just you call me. You just call me. You just call me Wally or Mr. Wally. No need for Doc <laughs> or Prof. It makes me feel old. I'd be happy if you just call me Wally. Actually, okay. Um, Wally, can I request uh, the presentation as well? Uh, okay. You will get it on Monday or Tuesday when you get your certificate. It will be attached with the certificate. Oh, thank you very All much. All right, you're thank welcome. You okay, much. thank you, Jovan. Thank you for joining thank me. I'll see you next week at Bistro. Yeah, thank yeah. You, sir. I'll thank see you. you. Okay, who's next? Who wants to talk to me? Um, who have we got? I've got a uh, young lady, Nympha. Hello, gorgeous. Hello, Nympha. Okay, you're next. Hello, Hi, um, Hi, how are you today? I'm fine, but I, I'm working, so I sometimes just uh, not, not uh, in having a video call sometimes because I'm working. That's okay. I, uh, I encourage you to work and make yeah, money so you can become rich. Go ahead. H have you learned anything today? <laughs> Yeah, I have learned uh, something today, sir, that is very uh, important. Uh, in order to be to become successful, you must be creative, and then uh, you must be production centric, uh, customer centric, and then you must be uh, uh, feedback centric and service centric. <laughs> You're on the right track. And then, uh, yeah, yeah, and then um, I also learned about the simplicity, that being sim uh, uh, being simple. You must not be so complicated. And then being transparent also, you must be honest. Very good, Nympha. Thank, Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next week at Biz Talk. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, anybody else? Where's Muhammad Yusuf? Are you there, Muhammad? Unmute your microphone, Muhammad Yusuf. You want to talk to me, Muhammad? Go ahead. Mr. Amala, could you help Muhammad unmute his microphone? Hi, Muhammad. Say hello to me, Muhammad. Hello. Hi, how are you? Uh, I'm right. fine, sir. I'm yeah. fine. I'm very happy. You look sir. My pleasure. You need to come every week. I'll be here again next week with another lecture at the same time. Please make sure you join me, all right? Thank you, Muhammad. God bless you. Take care, Muhammad. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, Hashika. Hello, Hashika. How are you? Can you unmute your microphone for me, Hashika? Go ahead, Hashika. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Hi, how Can are you, I... young lady? Uh, fine, sir. <laughs> Tell me, what have you learned today? Uh, I learned, sir, about uh, business, how to handle and um, leadership. Uh, can you send a presentation, sir? As I just said, young lady, it will be sent to everybody on Monday or Tuesday with your certificate. Is that okay? 
Okay, so thank okay, you. Okay, um, I because my assistant will send them out on Monday or Tuesday, provided you've attended the whole session, she will send it out with your certificate. Okay, is that all right? Okay, okay thank you. sir, thank you. You're sir. welcome. You. Okay, anybody else want to talk to me? Mr. Amala, do you want to ask me any questions, mate? Seeing the students are smarter than me and you, they know all. Do you want to ask me any questions? No? All right, okay. Alice, do you want to ask me a question, young lady? Gorgeous. Alice? Okay. T. Kim, do you have any questions for Wally? No? All right. Ladies and gentlemen, let me remind you that Monday night is a very special night. We go into motivation madness again with my boss, my guru, and my idol, Mr. Benson Ma, who's one of the greatest motivators for young people I've heard deliver in a long time. And I encourage you to attend Benson's uh, motivation madness this coming Monday at eight o'clock. Um, if anything, he will stimulate you and make your blood boil so you can make money. All right. He'll make your blood boil so you become hungry to make millions. All right. And he does that in a good way. I encourage you all to join us for um, Motivation Madness on Monday. And I would love to see you all next week at BizTalk next Saturday at five o'clock. Me and my co-hosts will be here again with his beautiful smile. And I'll be here with my beautiful mouth to talk a lot and educate you once again. Is everybody happy with that? Yeah? Ladies and gentlemen, from Wally Router down here in Singapore, where it's just gone um, close to eight minutes to seven on a very hot and sticky day, I bid you all sweet dreams, good night, have a great dinner, Daniel. Don't drink too much beer tonight, Daniel. All right? Everybody smile. And where's my good friend, um, Min Armstrong? I suggest you go out with your friends tonight and practice what you learn, all right? And let me know if it works, all right? Okay, good night, everybody. God bless you all. Mr. Amala, thank you for being a great co-host, my dear boss. Have a great night tonight. Good evening, everyone.